So this is the side of the colon. We have the lumen out up right here. This is the mucosal layer. Here's the submucosa and the muscularis externa with the inner circular layer and the outer longitudinal layer. And deep to that, we have the serosa. And the way that I distinguish this from other parts of the GI tract is, well, it's relatively boring histologically compared to the other parts. Um, you have Crips of Libricoon here. It's mostly made of uh, goblet cells, a few enterocytes. Uh, here's the lamina propria. Here's the muscularis mucosa. But you'll notice there's no uh, villi here. There are no, um, it's not like pits and glands like you would see in the stomach. The submucosa doesn't have any special features. So it's kind of similar to the jejunum where um, it's just collagen, blood vessels, nerve tissue. Uh, you don't have any Brunner's glands like you would in the duodenum. You don't have any Peyer's patches like in the ileum and you don't have any gastric uh, glands. The manual points out that the crypts of Libricoon go all the way down towards the mu uh, muscularis mucosa. You can see some longitudinal sections over here, and these are cross sections of crypts over here. In addition, we can very clearly see the muscularis mucosa, whereas in some of the small intestine slides, a little hard to see, uh, just especially when there are so many glands in the submucosa. Um, in the duodenum and the uh, ileum has tons of iris patches. Uh, one unique feature that the colon does have is the tinea coli. So if we zoom out to low power, you see this is the outer longitudinal layer. It's relatively thin. Here's your inner circular layer. When you get to here, you can see that thickens very considerably. And there are three bands of longitudinal muscle uh, called tinea coli. And in order to visualize th this, I find it easier if you can look at some cartoons um, to explain this a little better. This is something I stole from Dr. Martinez's lecture on the large intestine. So you can see all the layers here, mucosa, submucosa, this is the circular layer. Normally the outer longitudinal layer is not that wide until it gets to this area here, which is the tinea coli. Okay, so this is a cross section. So you see these three thick bands of muscle. These are the three tinea coli, and they're running into and out of the computer screen. And the reason they're called longitudinal bands of muscle is that anytime you see a cartoon depiction of the colon, you see these uh, lines running along the length of the colon. So here's one. Here's another one over here. And here's another uh, color-coded depiction just to illustrate that there are three bands of muscle, the red, blue, and green. And they're at uh, like 120 degrees away from each other. So again, this is the tinea coli, this section right here. So deep to that would be the serosa. And if you take a closer look, I think we can see some epithelial cells, squamous epithelial cells at the edge of the serosa. So this is the mesothelium. So in between the two muscular layers, here's the monetary plexus again. And the lab manual says it's easy to see the submucosal plexus. Uh, which kind of surprised me. I actually found it a little bit challenging to find, uh, but I think if we look closer, this looks like one of them. This is probably a cross section. Uh, the, os the axons, when they're in the cross section, they have this sort of uh, circular, frothy appearance. And then when they're in a longitudinal section, they have this wavy appearance. So here's another one. This might be the actual cell body inside the plexus. These guys too. It's just a little hard to see this mess around it. It's probably just collagen. This also looks like nerve tissue.
is a lymphoid aggregate. Here's some more nerve tissue. Here's another one. And in the serosa, you can see that there's a lot of fat tissue here. It's a little um, squashed, it looks like, but these are lipocytes. And this is where you expect to find the uh, omental appendices or epiploic appendices. So if you look at our picture, it's these little uh, sections of fat next to the tenue coli. Now this is the appendix, and just like the rest of the colon, uh, in the epithelial layer, we have crypts that extend all the way down towards the submucosa. Uh, but obviously this looks a lot different from the previous slide. We have a ton of lymphocytes surrounding the uh, everything in the mucosal layer. Uh, we can barely make out maybe some muscularis mucosa over here. But you can see that the lamina propria is almost completely covered in lymphocytes. Uh, we don't see any villi, as you would expect, because we're not in the small intestine. And the manual does say to look for high endothelial venules. So we've seen these before uh, in lymph nodes. So these are specialized venules that are uh, unique among blood vessels, because normally when you're looking at blood vessels, you expect to see an endothelium where the cells have a very um, flat look to them, so they're squamous, like this one right here. But endothelial, high endothelial venules are more cuboidal, and their special function is to let lymphocytes in and out. So what you're looking for is something like this, where the cell is a little taller. Um, this is probably one here as well. This can be one right here. And, to, and uh, this, maybe this one. And to really convince yourself, you have to compare it to a regular venule, right? So if you go deeper into the mucosa, like this one right here, it's probably just a plain old venule. You can see how tiny and flat the epithelium is, the, the endothelium of the cell. And you compare that to high, the high endothelial venule. And other than that, we looked at the submucosa out here, mostly collagen, some blood vessels. You have your two layers of muscle in the muscularis externa, the inner circular, and the outer longitudinal. And we have the serosa on the outside. Now let's move on to the anal canal. And there's a lot going on in this slide, so I recommend that you spend more time uh, studying this one. So on the right side of the slide, we have the rectum, or the end of the colon, and on the left, we have the anus. So let's look at the epithelium at higher power. So we see enterocytes and goblet cells, as we would expect. Um, simple columnar epithelium. And as you move towards anus, you can find the pectinate line, which is that abrupt transition from simple columnar epithelium to stratified squamous epithelium. All right, so this all looks like stratified squamous epithelium to me. And I'd say this is simple columnar. So the pectinate line is somewhere around here. If we look at the deeper layers, we've got the lamina propria, this looks like muscularis mucosa. And this might be the submucosa. It's a little harder to see. And then here are your muscularis la external layers. And something that's important to see is that th this is smooth muscle. We've been seeing a lot of smooth muscle throughout the GI tract, right? So this is muscle in longitudinal section. Here they are in cross section. And if you keep going, this is muscle as well. The 
this is not smooth muscle, it looks different, right? This is skeletal muscle. This is where you have the external anal sphincter coming in now. These are in cross-section, but you can see how they look different in the smooth muscle. And if we zoom out even more, uh, we have all this fat out here where we had serosa, and it's transitioning into adventitia out here. And we can even see some bundles of uh, skeletal muscle out here. It's a little hard to see the striations, but uh, this is skeletal muscle. And if we look uh, distal to the pectinate line, right, where was it? Right here, around here, you have stratified squamous epithelium. But it's, it's not keratinized just yet. You see nuclei all the way out to the most distal or the most superficial uh, layer of cells. But if we keep going, you can start to see keratin forming. See how there's no nuclei out here? Yeah, so this is keratin, which you would expect because now this is skin. So this is a keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. And the transition, which is Mm, might be somewhere around here, right? Somewhere around here. That's Hilton's line. So Hilton's line is the separation between a non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium and a keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. And if we keep looking distally, you'll see all the features that you'd expect to see in skin. So. Here we have sebaceous glands, we have hair follicles, and just a lot of hair follicles all around. Uh, more sebaceous glands over here next to hair follicles. And if we go deeper, we see the skeletal muscle again out here. And just remember that these batches of skeletal muscle uh, they're what comprise the external anal sphincter, which is under conscious control, so that's why it's skeletal muscle, whereas the uh, internal anal sphincter will be smooth muscle, and it's um, not under voluntary control. And that's pretty much it for the GI tract. So make sure you go through the manual, um, and the PowerPoint's actually very helpful as well. Uh, so this summary uh, describes the differences between uh, the mucosal layers for the different parts of the GI tract. And I uh, hope you found this helpful. So just let me know any feedback, if there's something else I can be doing differently in these videos. Uh, but otherwise, good luck and have fun.